good evening everyone uh, uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on uh, post covid sports economy and the positive uh, uh, positive part sports can play in uh, our lives and the larger economic ecosystem uh, uh, post covid uh, as we go through this terrible uh, uh, events taking uh, place around us sport continues to have an integral part in our lives i've been reading some newspaper coverage recently and as you've seen a lot of papers a lot of websites have been running interviews of sports personalities uh, uh, talking about last uh, past cricket series very popular cricket series india pakistan they've been interviewing uh, pakistani uh, cricketers about indian stars and vice versa they've tried to keep the engagement entertainment alive Uh, a lot of us who do not indulge in formal sports uh, i'm sure uh, you know do uh, as basic as a humble uh, daily walk uh, so physical fitness obviously is a very important part of our lives especially during this uh, time when uh, health has become uh, such a big uh, a prime concern uh, related to that uh, organized sport has also provided us with immense entertainment as we've seen over the last many years especially in india with the advent of ipl before that you know the cricketing economy and now with so many other sports that are uh, uh, that are uh, that has uh, viewers hooked at last count we had uh, seven or eight major leagues running on tv there is of course the ipl there is isl the badminton league uh, there is the pro volleyball league uh, pro kabaddi league uh, pro wrestling league table tennis these are some of the leagues that i have been able to count and i'm sure there are many more running the three major ones the big ones out of these are obviously ipl kabaddi and football which have the most amount of traction uh, i was going through one of the reports done by uh, group m uh, which which uh, says ipl last year in 2019 had a tv reach of 46 crore people that's a huge number that's almost uh, half of india's uh, you know adult population being exposed to ipl on television alone this does not count digital reach that's a massive number pkl which is the kabaddi league league had across all its season 32 crore people touched in a year through television alone isl which is the soccer league had 16 crore people touched uh, so as you can see the reach of sport is immense, immense. the impact it has is immense and uh, uh, india fortunately has also evolved into a multi sport interest country and now that the league and matches have been deferred or cancelled uh, the overall impact of uh, this cancellation deferment on the indian economy and overall uh, sporting ecosystem is likely to be uh, significant uh, goes without saying as we have also seen the some of the latest development i am told epl is starting on 17th of june so that's very good news uh, nba is restarting from 31st of july though uh, in a curtailed season this year bundesliga is already back uh, and uh, i've uh, we've all read some interviews here and there which say that uh, bci is also considering organizing some uh, cricket matches perhaps ipl behind closed doors in a, a september october season or one of the reports said it might happen outside india so today's uh, conversation is uh, going to be uh, centered around uh, discussing the impact of covid on the sporting ecosystem and once we are out of it uh, what happens if we can uh, do a bit of a crystal ball gazing with me on the panel are uh, four uh, experts in the domain from uh, various parts of the sporting ecosystem uh, i'm sure many of you know uh, uh, vinith karnik who runs uh, group m esp which is india's premier uh, sporting consultancy sport investment firm uh, beneath uh, and his team uh, perhaps are involved in uh, 70 80% of the sports investment decisions that take place in this country from an advertising point of view welcome vinith thank you for joining us we have amit timari tiwari who is the uh, chief marketing officer of havels which is a large uh, household appliances brand in india they've been a, a very significant investor in sporting ecosystem in this country uh, with budgets allocated across sports i remember havels has been uh, sponsor of ipl for many many years now we have with us uh, satish menon the ceo of uh, the punjab team of ipl thank you satish for joining us uh, uh, ipl as we all know now in its uh, this this year would have been the 13th year and uh, the uh, ipl drives the uh, sports ecosystem in india there is uh, uh, no running away from that jatin paranjpe uh, ceo and founder of uh, kelo more uh, 
uh, Kalo More is about connecting people to uh, their passion, which is sports, uh, connecting people with various sporting arenas in the country. Uh, Jatin, as you all know, has also been an India cricket star. He's played for India. He's himself a passionate uh, sporting icon. So welcome, Jatin. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let me uh, uh, bucket this conversation in uh, four or five areas and then uh, one by one we, we can take up uh, uh, the conversation. There are four, five angles I would, if I can put them on the table. First and foremost, what happens to, you know, fans. I was going through, Vineet, uh, I was going through your report that you did in March, which said it's very important for, uh, uh, for league owners, for broadcasters, for team owners to keep fans engaged during the off season because fan loyalty is built over time. And dare I say, for cricket, that might be, might not be such a big problem. But for other uh, 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 sports, it might be. And even cricket at the, at the team level, keeping fan engagement, fan loyalty during a season when you're unable to uh, play is very, very important. Uh, so one is the fan part. Second part is, of course, the financial losses that uh, teams, franchise owners, broadcast partners have had to undergo because of covid Third is the grassroots level investment that gets impacted because of, again, financial issues. Then how do teams and the players themselves get impacted because of this? And lastly, brands that invest in sports, uh, especially brands that invest over time, which want a loyalty to be built associated with the sport and suddenly you have so much disruption, it requires for you to uh, restart the cycle all, all over again. So let me start with the first, uh, one of the key reasons why sport exists is because of its fans. Uh, what do fans do and what, what can team owners, what can uh, uh, broadcasters do to ensure fans are kept engaged during a period like this when there is no live sporting action? Vineet, why don't we start with you? So thanks, Naval. Thanks for uh, having me on the, on the webinar. And uh, yeah, absolutely relevant point. And uh, uh, actually, we are seeing a lot of broadcasters uh, uh, running some fabulous amount of sporting content, which people like us are queued on to because in absence of uh, a live sport, uh, we have gone back uh, to our uh, libraries on various different OTT platforms or could be on, on, the, on the television broadcast platforms. We've been running a lot of repeat shows. Uh, but yes, I mean, the learning that we have from, from the COVID period, from a fan engagement point, especially in times like these, uh, non-live content uh, becomes a very, very important part. And I have been over the last uh, couple of years very actively talking about uh, India uh, uh, taking the center stage on and creating some very interesting ideas uh, around non-life content because I think uh, we as a country haven't done enough in that space. Uh, so I'm sure a lot of the production community, the, the sporting community would have thought this uh, the time that they have got. So I think non-live content becomes a very, very integ integral part. I mean, we have seen the show that NBA launched um, on Netflix and the, and the kind of fan following it garnered on social media in terms of the chatter. Now, if these kind of shows uh, are developed uh, in the Indian ecosystem, uh, that possibly could have come handy at this point in time, right? So, so that's, that's pretty much the, the scenario. I mean, what a fan wants uh, from, a, from a consumption standpoint, we all know. Uh, and this is not only uh, uh, relevant for cricket, but it's actually more relevant for the, for the emerging sport economy in terms of how can they develop the sport on the back of uh, non-live content? How can they create national heroes uh, through non-live initiatives and make them relevant uh, in, the, in the off season? So I think uh, we need to uh, spend some time, evaluate various different ideas and options in creating uh, non-live content for, for times like these, Nawal. Satish, what is the conversation you guys are having in your meeting rooms? Uh, because, you know, uh, with uh, no clarity on IPL, uh, how do you ensure that, you know, you keep your fans engaged, the interest levels heightened, uh, and the loyalty intact? So I think uh, for a large part, it's digital media. Uh, it's digital media that's uh, playing a large part. We uh, we actually engage with most of our players. We take our key players and uh, create uh, interactions. Uh, we have, of course, daily posts, which is which is standard vanilla st stuff that we have, uh, you know, almost on a daily basis. We have an average of about about three or four posts a day, virtually going in there. Uh, 
innovative stuff uh, by way of uh, like uh, Vineet said, you know, content which is out of the box that we create, which keeps the interest going. Um, well, uh, that you know, there's not much you can do beyond this because, to my mind, uh, there's nothing that matches live content. I mean, one does. Well, I mean, why does one look forward to a game? I mean, the key to any 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 uh, match or anything is about contest. It's about the result. So you know, so end of the day, you know, once the once the once the result is out, uh, you know, then the interest level is only that much. You see, so to that extent, we are all looking forward to. Um, having the live game, and uh, the only thing we can do is to actually make create a build up towards that. Uh, you know, beyond that, there's not much we can do with it. Right, Amit. Uh, what's what's your opinion on that? Because brands also make a lot of investments to uh, for have uh, for having continuity of engagement with fans, and downtimes like these uh, disrupt that continuity. Does Havels do anything, or do are brands? Have you seen brands doing anything? Uh, beyond just riding on living uh, live sports uh, properties to uh, keep the engagement going. So oh, thanks, Naval. Uh, good evening, everyone. I think uh, Naval, before we get into what exactly brands do, Naval, there also an angle which how does the consumer behavior have actually changed in last two two and a half months? Which is very important to see. The fundamental change that has happened today that consumer is actually redefining everything. So what is happening in the consumer balances? If you uh, look into sports or engagement as an activity. Every consumer is trying to redefine what exactly is the means of entertainment or engagement for them. How do we actually rebuild the entire ecosystem that you're actually trying to do for it? What does that actually mean? So indoor is the new outdoor in the entire ecosystem today. And our experience is coming indoor. So I don't care whether I'm actually able to go out and all. And sports in, in the entire entertainment becomes much, much valid. So I just, uh, I think... Two days back, I've just gone through a report. This is a Bazuba report. Uh, it's a marketing report which comes every uh, six months. And which clearly says today also marketers, 40% of the people actually believe that the mainstream channel is sports. Whether you are doing a live sports, whether you are in streaming sports, but my engagement has to be very, very high when it comes to sports. Now coming to a question in terms of what exactly is consumer looking, what brands are looking, how are they actually moving? So there are three basic buckets which are actually moving us. Everybody is looking for how I'm getting engaged, either on ground, on air, how is my engagement level actually moving? What would be my experience that I'm actually able to do it? It's all about whether you do a virtual event, whether you do a direct event, whether you do an on ground, it's all about what is the experience that actually I'm trying to build in the entire ecosystem. And how is my interaction happening? Am I able to see the virtual things that I want to see today? I can't, yeah, I know I can't go and participate in an on ground thing, but how I can actually move the point coming to the uh, crux and why I'm saying all these examples to it is brands will still invest in advertising primarily, primarily on cricket or sorry, on the sports, irrespective whether it is live, whether it is non-live. Idea is what is the level of experience and engagement that you're actually trying to do. There's a small study which is, uh, which is done. I don't remember which exactly it is from. It is done from one of the papers, which is a target audience between 13 to 39 around 50%, close to 50% people really engage in in last two months and all the gaming content which is available across platform, which is on TV, which is on OTT, whether it is available on digital, whether it is uh, gaming, everything. So there you can actually make, there's a lot of potential in the TV that can actually talk about on that. Right. So yeah, I mean, keeping fan, fan engagement uh, going, uh, audience or consumer engagement, as you're saying, during... Uh, Lockdown time is very important and some of the uh, team owners are already doing that. Let me come to the second uh, and perhaps one of the very important aspects of this uh, entire conversation, which is the financial impact of uh, COVID on the sporting economy. Now, I was again uh, going through some of the uh, you know numbers and uh, as per estimates, the revenue of the Indian sports ecosystem is around a uh, billion dollars as of last year. Uh, which makes it, puts it in the range of around 7,000 crores. Out of which uh, IPL alone contributes almost two-thirds of the revenues, uh, around $600 million. Obviously, goes without saying, cricket is a very large part of that. And with IPL postponed and there's with little clarity on, you know, what is going to happen uh, uh, with this uh, entire delay, there are two, three aspects uh, that arise. First and foremost is what is the impact for the sports associations and the league owners. Uh, second is uh, what happens for the team owners with no fans in stadiums. So for example, uh, we all know that 
uh, ticket sales form a small portion in India as compared to so the Western economies of the overall revenues of teams. So even if one were to equalize that, that is that is still some revenue that goes away. Uh, and if there is talk about holding matches without fans, ground sponsorship is such an important part, such an important aspect of uh, the earning of the league owners and hence the teams and the entire ecosystem down below. Uh, how does the value of ground sponsorship change? So let me take these uh, three, four aspects of the financial impact one by one. Uh, first and foremost is uh, we all agree, I think that uh, People are looking forward to, uh, you know, watching live sporting action once lockdown opens. So there is no debate about, you know, what will be the kind of viewership or traction when it comes to uh, sport. The important part here is twofold. One, if there is no fan in the stadium, Amit, how does that change things for you as a marketer, as an advertiser, as a brand which is wanting to invest in a sporting let me start with you on this. See, uh, Naval Bajaj actually said in terms of now, every particular marketer and every particular allied partner, whether it is a sports uh, firm or whether it's a team, or a, we really need to sit and rebuild and reboot what we actually need to do. We know what the situation is. We can't change that situation. And irrespective, I'll tell you a different scenario, just a slightly different from what we actually look for it. If let's say fans are being allowed to go to the stadium, let's keep the hand to the heart. How many fans will actually go today? Because the fear is so high that nobody wants to do at the cost of their health, whatever you really want to look for it. So if you see that today we need to recreate what is the maximum engagement value that we can actually drive for the consumer, how we can actually maximize the bang for the buck that you really need to put and do the actual form of the entire investment that actually look for it. And if you compare last two particular seasons of let's say talk about IPL only, even if a, let's say associate sponsorship presented on stars and all, your 50% cost was there primarily to do it on the, any of your, whether it is uh, uh, on any of your digital platforms to look for. But still brands are advertising. Mm -hmm. There are 224 brands advertising, let's say on a TV. There are he, half number of brands advertising on digital platform, also, which is, which is, a, which is itself is a big number to actually uh, lock and talk about. So everything has to be recrafted, keeping in mind what exactly is the movement of the situation. We know the situation is, the same situation what used to happen before 20th of March will not work. What has happened and worked for last year will not work. New means of engagement, new means of interaction, and new means of how we can actually have our brand recall much higher. In this because we will, there will be multiple brands that will be gaining for the same momentum to build for. But you have to be smart enough in terms of creating your own ecosystem that can actually make a differentiation in the entire scheme that you actually advertise for. So Vineet, what could those new means and ways of uh, interacting with fans and uh, viewers be? Uh, your own report said that uh, the overall sports sponsorship market in India in, uh, alone uh, was at around 9,000 crore mark in 2019. That's a significant number. And if it were to get significantly impacted because of COVID, we will obviously be, be much worse off. So what is the way to retain this uh, kind of uh, Huge sum of money. See, this uh, the, the number that you spoke about, 9,000 odd crores, uh, is, is a culmination of on ground, on air sponsorship, both together, plus the celebrity endorsement piece as well, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, there is no shying away from the fact that there's going to be an impact, right? But the, but the, the, good, the good news is um, that we are hoping and we are seeing things opening up now, and, and I think. Uh, even if things come to a near normalcy and even we, we look at any sport like an IPL or an ISL or a PKL uh, this year uh, uh, without fans or uh, closed door, I think it's, it's fine because uh, any which way, in, in my uh, uh, view, uh, I don't think any of the advertisers uh, gave more than 20% weightage for the on-ground on presence that they had right. uh, on, on match days. It was, I mean, television, I mean, it was any any live sport is made for TV kind of, right. yeah. kind of and most of that value is derived derived from that. So I would not worry too much as long as uh, things are opening up. Uh, and I think we still have enough time to uh, get the lost ground back from an India perspective. I mean, I understand that worldwide uh, things will never be the same because there have been some substantial scaled up events who have been cancelled. But in India, we haven't seen a cancellation yet. I mean, we, we may have some kind of an impact in the short term, 
but i think we have about good 6 months now to to catch up or catch up on on an overall uh, revenue right. model so i mean fingers crossed i mean if things come to normal so if there is not a second wave in india uh, i think we have a good amount of time to to catch up with uh, with the lost opportunity in the last few months and i think the 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 silver lining of this is that unlike uh, the western economies where a lot of the leagues run through the entire almost through the entire year in right. india majority of them leave alone kabaddi which has multiple seasons in the year right have three month four month window in a year so it is not that difficult to find that three four uh, month window any time of the year depending upon uh, no clash with you know other sporting events internationally or an olympics or uh, something else so i think that uh, goes in in the favor of indian league so for example badminton which happens only one a year once a year wrestling league happens we all know once a year football again is only once a year it runs for almost three and a half four months but even if there is a delay it is possible to fit it into a you know 12 month calendar rather than skipping it all together which might end up happening you know for example the baseball league in the us they are having to curtail it because you know the months that have been lost have been lost for good you cannot uh, bring them back also naval another point, point, uh, another, when you another, yeah another point naval here was that see india in india the rainy season has already kicked off i mean we are seeing rains already uh, uh, for the last 3 days yeah so technically speaking uh, we have only lost two months okay so we have only so march and april are months which which are lost i mean so we can so if if things go well and if we are able to start uh, 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 august or maybe september i think we will still be able to but this is off season for live sport in india so we need to i mean that's a good news that's right satish let me uh, jump to you now because you know you are a team owner you uh, uh, work very closely with the bcci and the cricketing ecosystem obviously what happens financially impacts every team how do you see this play out do you think down the line uh, uh, covid will have a significant impact on the economic ecosystem of you know cricket in in the country and what happens uh, uh, in the entire value chain uh, first i stand corrected i'm not a team owner i work for a, for a team okay so uh, uh, so to answer your point um, No, so first, I just want to take up on what uh, what Amit said and uh, Vineet said in terms of, and it's more Vineet than uh, what Amit said about uh, engagement. And and Vineet said that uh, that you know sports is made for uh, uh, you know broadcast largely. While I agree in terms of numbers, I have a big broadcast background, so therefore that's true. But what what sponsorship does is what what Amit kept saying about engagement. At the end of the day, the the ground sponsorship creates. touch points for you to be able to connect to be able to build a brand you know use the salience yeah. of the brand to be able to rub off on the on the on the audiences and the fans and so on and so forth so in so far as that is concerned and and the worry there being if there are no spectators on the ground how does that happen much of uh, those key elements that are that are normally at play will happen and what we will do from this year on is we basically will use all our digital platforms to be able to kick off all those engagements for example we'll start looking at for example if it's it's a brand which which has a specific target group we will have we will have carved out the tar- target group in a manner in which uh, we will we will cater to that core target group attract them to the brand find the brand uh, requirements as far as uh, those audiences are concerned and create a connect and engagement on a long term basis but to answer your other question novel which is one of uh, you know how is it going to impact uh, uh you know cricket per se uh, or other sports per se uh, i would say that uh, i mean it's a bit of a motherhood statement in saying that that you know that yes as much as it would affect any other business it will affect cricket uh, or sports for that matter but uh, i would think that this disruption is very temporary uh, people are just waiting to get back uh, and, in, and more so with cricket because this is still a one horse drawn uh sport in this country despite the fact that we keep saying that other sports are on the rise but the kind of numbers that cricket throw up is is unheard of or unseen anywhere else in the world i think it's the only country that can take right. you know so to that extent i don't see a worry at all when it comes to uh when it comes to cricket coming back uh you know people are waiting for live sports and i'm sure that you know they're just waiting for star to bring back all their uh all the sporting properties that they may have um yes it will bounce back it's a matter of time and india is a very resilient country it it's a matter of time before we uh, we 
we, we, we back on the, in the, in the saddle uh, is the way that I see it. Uh, let me come to Jatin now. Jatin, you uh, you are part of the ecosystem in a very interesting way. Uh, apart from having represented India and being uh, having been part of Team Sport, you now also work with a lot of uh, local sporting arenas. Uh, though we know now that uh, in many ways, uh, sport uh, you know organized sport might come back uh, soon in some form, even though it it might be behind closed doors without fans in stadiums, but physical contact where somebody is required to go to an arena, I mean, you can't, 500 people can't go to an arena and participate in sporting activities uh, uh, without keeping, you know, adequate social distancing. So how does that part of the piece, which is more personal in nature, get impacted beyond, uh, say, something like organized sport? How does that, how does that play out? Uh uh, I think uh, Nabal, uh, you know, it has a very, very big impact on uh, on sports participation. Let's not forget that sports participation is where the seeds of commercial success are sown. You know, so you you need to you need to safeguard sports participation uh, in in terms of uh, COVID nineteen. And there are two buckets in sports participation. One is uh, one is your uh, five to fifteen kind of. Uh, uh, sports person in, in the age group of 5 to 15. The other part of uh, sports participation is the amateur sports uh, sports person, you know, uh, mothers and fathers and college going kids who are playing uh, amateur sport, you know, as, as a substitute for going to the gym five times, five times a week. They want to play at a, a football turf a couple of times a week because they can play box cricket or they can play a game of futsal. Uh, so I, I feel both these buckets are going to be hugely impacted. Like Amit said, uh, you know, one is well, one is when the lo- when the lockdown lifts, but the other is the mentality. So if you look at the five to fifty bucket, these decisions are taken by parents until schools open. You know, me as a parent, I am not going to send my son and daughter to go out and and play till uh, school opens in in in, uh, in in all its entirety. So I think we are basically from a business to explain it from a business perspective. Your financial year just went from twelve months to six months uh, essentially. You know, so I think I think there will be uh, uh, things will fully start opening up. Uh, around Diwali time, I think, and and these are extremely challenging times for venue owners, for coaches, uh, because you've got to look at the profile of these people, right? So most of the coaches in India uh, are doing this as a second kind of job. You know, they are either yeah. working working in a bank or they are working in some other institution. They are ex sportsmen, and in their free time, they are coaching. Uh, you know, so so this this COVID piece could have a uh, you know a, 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 a terrible impact on their mindset because they might say that hey you know this this coaching piece is too fragile uh, to depend on from an economic perspective let me just go back and try and work in my company full time that gives me more kind of uh, uh, you know uh, stability so so what i am trying to say is that uh, to safeguard these kind of uh, unorganized pieces right these are sport essentially at the back end is unorganized so to safeguard these unorganized pieces i think there needs to be a coalition there needs to be a coalition of custodians across sports. So, national sports federations working with the government, working with the BCCI to find out how they can rehabilitate the supply. Because let's not forget that the most threatened part of sport in India is the supply. You don't have enough cricket coaches. You don't have enough quality cricket coaches. You don't have enough football coaches. You don't have enough basketball coaches. So, so if COVID actually makes current coaches to, to leave coaching, then your graph on the supply side is going to go down. So I think I think what we are missing is a coalition of custodians who need to uh, who need to use this time uh, to to uh, to help uh, sustain the supply side of sport. Yes, I think government, uh, uh, thankfully for the last uh, uh, four or five years, has been very focused on uh, improving the uh, sporting ecosystem, and I'm sure once uh, they have a handle on what's going on with the economy, reviving the sporting ecosystem will also be on top of their agenda. Vineet, let me come back to you and ask you another question. Uh, it is, uh, you have a uh, you know, right point that ground sponsorship constitutes a small portion of, uh, or rather fan connect, let me use the right word, fan connect constitutes a small part of what a brand requires to do as a part of their sponsorship package. But what we also know, I was, I, I was uh, 
moderating a couple of panels with the uh, CMOs uh, in the last couple of weeks. The sense I've also got is that a large number of brands are very deeply impacted economically. Hence, marketing budgets over the next six months to perhaps uh, next 12 months will be under severe stress. And if marketing budgets are under stress, obviously the money that flow, flows into sports from the brand side will uh, not be the same. Some of the large sponsors who committed five years deals, of course, will be staying. But uh, since 70, 75% of the money comes from you know, season to season, that money, the pool of the money will get impacted. What's the sense when you talk to, because you guys work with a large set of clients across sectors, what's the sense you get from uh, your set of clients in terms of how will investment into sporting properties pan out, say, over the next three to four quarters? That's an absolutely fabulous question, Naval, and, uh, and I guess, uh, I mean, the, the, the things that you're hearing uh, from the marketing or the brand community is quite similar to what we are seeing. So the challenges they have currently, I mean, the, the kind of the topic that we are discussing today is perhaps of least relevance to them, uh, if you ask me in so many words, uh, in, in terms of today's times. The, the reason being the challenges that they are facing today is getting up to speed from the full-fledged production capacity in terms of getting the entire full production setup operational at this point in time. Uh, parallelly, uh, uh, while the production setup comes to normalcy, they're looking at a massive uh, infrastructure issue from a logistic and supply chain standpoint in terms of getting the getting the goods to the to the right places from a retail standpoint. Okay, and then about the challenges that we keep hearing at a retail space in terms of sometimes it's open, sometimes it's shut. Uh, left-hand side, right-hand side, various different models, various states are talking about. So these are the first three challenges that any production uh, or any CEO is going to be facing. Now, again, I'm seeing an opportunity here, uh, an opportunity to possibly get our house in order because today, and we are, because we're discussing sport and investments in sport, this is an off-season for sport. Traditionally, if you look at 2019, post 24th or 27th of May, once the IPL final is over, you haven't seen any live sport or live event in India because it's rainy season, right? Now, how is the entire sporting ecosystem doing their setup in these two, three months and are prepared for an August and September kind of a, a month to start live action in terms of sport is the story back home, okay? Because I think if we can put our acts together, the advertising community or the brand community will be ready by then because they will be coming in fast. They will take about a month or maybe maximum two months to get their house in order in terms of their supply chain, their production capacities and retail and stuff like that. So I think if we are keeping ourselves ready to, to start the live action, maybe by end August or early September, I, I think that's going to be bringing a lot of positivity to the entire fraternity. And when I'm saying fraternity, it's, it's, I'm, I, I include myself. I include uh, Satish who represents a team. I include uh, Amit who represents a brand. And of course, Jatin who obviously is waiting for the, the entire setup to, uh, to start, up, start up, right? So therefore, I think if we put our house in order uh, and be ready for September or August end, I don't think uh, the impact is going to be very, very high because I'm again repeating, this is off season. So while IPL is suspended, and if, if IPL uh, comes back, uh, as we are all hearing in the news and, uh, and the chatters around, in the, uh, I think, I think uh, the loss will not be too much. I think, I think I, Neet, that's my, my question is slightly larger. My question is that, granted, sporting action will be back. Uh, fans uh, have only, say, 10-15% value in the entire marketing mix. But what do you do when a client does not have money? His business is very badly impacted. COVID has wiped off, you know, significant part of his top line. He's shaved off his marketing budget. If you had 30 sponsors last year, 10 of them are not even in a position to talk to you uh, for sponsorship. So what, what happens from that larger point of view? It is not a question of, you know, whether a sporting property delivers uh, viewership or fans or not. That is uh, granted. But from a larger point of view, from an economic uh, impact point of view, does that index of 100 become 70, 80, Naturally, it is not going to remain 100. Sure. So does it remain 80, 70, or does it come down to 60 or 50? What happens there? So very difficult to put a number to, uh, to that, uh, Naval. Okay. The, the reason I am a little optimistic about this is because, see, today we have seen a muted uh, 
advertising uh, on various different platforms okay because today we are in a lockdown stage okay i am talking about august september okay from a sporting standpoint i think imagine i mean just hypothetically let me paint a picture imagine if everything goes well and ipl starts uh, and uh, in 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 open september first or second week okay won't that bring positivity and reason sure. for advertisers to advertise because yes. by then by then they will also have to sell their goods right and services see yes. because this, this entire i mean I, and i completely agree with satish that i think a very short term impact on on indian economy because we have a such a strong local demand we have a very very strong local demand and therefore in the shorter term uh, yes there is a muted demand from the advertising community but i think 3 months or 4 months down the line i am pretty optimistic that things will start coming to near normalcy and in that scenario whoever comes first and whoever launches the first live action sport is going to reap benefits out of it that's yes, a that, absolutely that there is no denying that let me come to the next question now uh, next point uh, rather Uh, again uh, since we are talking about financial impact and since brands and uh, advertisers invest significant amount of money and since that runs the sporting economy especially in a country like india amit tiwari what happens to the objectives that you want to do say for example you've been uh, sponsoring certain league certain team for a good part of 5 years and suddenly you have so much disruption that you know the season gets cancelled and for almost 12 months you are uh, you are uh, disconnected with the fan does that create significant disruption in your plans in terms of how you saw that property delivering for you because as truth holds uh, you don't have money so much money to go around that you sponsor all the leagues and hope that you know two or three of them will always uh, be on uh, at a given time so now well uh, before getting into this question i think uh, what uh, just to take back what vineet was saying and i have a little difference in what vineet's uh, point of view is see today uh, it's not about and as you rightly pitched about in the previous question is if you talked about in terms of just the, let's say the league will start the ipl will start but today do really the brands have the money to actually look for that and second thing is what will i gain today what will be my particular objective even if if i let's say i sponsor xyz team or xyz uh, sponsorship patterns on any of the ipl then what will be my particular objective that is trying to be fulfilled because if you see if you run on a jan december calendar or you run on april march calendar financially your 50 60% of market is already gone do you really want to save the money because cash is everybody wants to keep it because that is what to actually decide how do you want to move to your particular future so i have a little disconnect with that whether really any particular brand should be thinking now coming to the second point i have been discussing with a lot of other uh, my particular counterparts within the community and the fraternity because there are people who have actually put in 5 years 2 years 3 years commitment in terms of moving forward there also we some deals that already started about t20 world cup was supposed to happen in the month of october and november and the way things are moving that yes today the fans will definitely move on to a different space there are other important and technology means which people are utilizing i i was just uh, seeing a sample of uh, this e uh, es spent did a 12 hours marathon which was absolutely good in terms of mix of a live streaming as well as a proper content and there was good amount of traction which was yeah. actually built into the entire you are able to connect it obviously your economies on scale would also be taken care Uh, in terms of the entire uh, system that you're trying to build it, but the larger piece, which most of the marketers today are talking, and since I am also representing those uh, community today, performance marketing is going to the key for the next eight to ten months. If I'm able to get the return, if I'm able to get that particular leads, and if that converts into my particular sale, whether it happens through a digital video, whether it happens through a digital plus an online lead management system, that will actually define because today any money that is actually spent has to calibrate into the sales what you are actually trying to do. Otherwise. brand building exercise will definitely take a back step because this is not the time to actually build a brand it's not trying to build a visibility for you it's about building the performance for your particular organization that will actually make a huge difference that's well, what what if what if i pose the counter uh, valid points on it that's why i raised that with uh, vineet but what if i were to uh, give you a counter point which is as follows we've had significant disruption because of covid sales have been impacted company stock lines have been impacted because of which marketing budgets have been cut because of which uh, a lot of the money has gone as you saying into performance marketing there is very little to go around for brand building but come say september or october 3 4 months from now one assumption we all have to make is that we will be out of this in 2 to 3 months time out of the lockdown i mean i do not know how long the vaccine or the cure will take but out of the lockdown which will allow 
a large amount of economic uh, activity to resume now once we are in that condition won't a brand actually want which has been kind of in a silent period for a six i mean eventually you are running a business and you will also have to look at you know the next 2 to 3 years and not just keep looking at the next month or the next quarter won't a lot of brands which have been silent and only looking at who have been only looking at performance marketing want to say okay hey you know there is a big uh, sporting property starting let me put my umbrella on that let me put my flag on that and own the big bang piece because as we all know sports is not just about you know performance marketing sports is now about making that big uh, big announcement making that big statement that hey my brand is well and active my brand is aspirational my brand is the one that you need to engage with and a lot of companies okay i am investing in the next 18 months the past 6 months are gone but now i need to next invest in the next 2 years and let me put the money uh, on a large sporting event so uh, double just to uh, bring back and uh, again a uh, question for a question and bringing to your particular question which you asked previously with beneath this is in terms of yes definitely brands want to do it but what would be the magnitude that you really want to invest today if i really compare an apple to apple comparison the investment that you used to do it a year back on the same property the timing can be different the scale and the magnitude can be different do really brands ready today the answer keeping the hand to the heart no nobody will be ready to do that what to that what does that actually brings to the answer is that every property that he comes up for a grab has to have be recalibrated and reeconomized to the spend that will brands in today scenario able to afford it as you rightly said that this 100 will not be 70 and said, nobody knows today nobody can predict That's whether right. 50 or 60 even from the same situation from the brand nobody knows whether even after september or october will i able to or anybody will able to achieve that particular numbers the answer is is absolutely in a very great area to look for So if really the opportunity comes, it has to be a very very smart opportunity to look for, and obviously it has to be economized to the sense that people are able, the brands are able to afford and think about into the consideration set today, and that will actually define whether it will actually be an impact driven decision or it will more people will try more of a technology driven to be relevant, but won't be spending too much in the entire fray to be a launch or something to kind of announcement value to bring it. Satish, you as work uh, with a brand, l- large number of brands across categories, which specifically sponsor your, you know, team jerseys and a lot of the other stuff. Are there any conversations you've had with these brands uh, in the recent past, which can tell us how what they're thinking? No, so we have continuous conversation going. Um, you know, uh, not all of it is uh, towards whether you want to stay back or not stay back. And and as uh, you know, and I firmly believe as as much as my Uh, partners who are working with us that you know that IPL is one of the best platform to be in, and uh, you know not necessarily answering to this question of yours, but taking from what Amit and uh, Vinit were saying. Uh, my take on this is, I'm sorry, I mean, I mean that's not a question that you posed to me, but all the same, I'd like to add my two bit to it in saying that look, I mean, every brand has its own uh, has its own uh, time frame. Every category has its own uh, you know has its own uh, space. for example even in a in a dull market uh, there are brands which need uh, presence in some form or the other or or increased voice uh, you know share of voice for example i in my opinion we constantly tracking the market and we know for a fact that there are brands which have uh, brands and categories which are going to do very well in the coming months i mean they will ride out the covid uh, uh, pandemic and will definitely come on top of it give us examples not brands maybe categories no why not brands even brands i'm okay. saying that, that you know that uh, there are brands which are fmcg uh, specific brands which have which have been doing very well and probably you will see a lot of shift for all along you know on sponsorship you didn't have all for that matter even when it comes to uh, sponsorship uh, on on broadcast you've had uh, you know um, um, not so much of fmcg brands uh, taking up uh, you know sponsorship but you may see that happen because because they have a lot to compete for in that market so definitely they'll probably push more money into it so there's there's no yes and no to this and you know one has to it's a process of discovery in many ways none of us are, i don't think we can look down and say yes this is how it's going to be and this is not how it's, it's going to be a very very different market as amit said earlier it's going to we got to innovate we'll have to think of you know different ways of being able to attract the consumer go into the market i, I see no worry about uh, not just about uh, i about any sport in the in the future i mean if anything sport because uh, you know sport in many ways as i call it you know it's, it's a 
uh, it's 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 anyway gives you an identity as I call it. You know, so everyone wants to be associated with some sport or the other. So to that extent, you know, I don't see. So at the end of the day, the the brand is going to chase that cust consumer or the customer. So there's no way that you know that uh, I see a, a, a downward trend uh, when it comes to. There will be some highs and lows. There's always some tough. Um, but we'll ride it out. And I keep, repeat at the cost of repeating, I'll say this, that this is all a temporary phase. And in our country, especially, I think it won't take uh, that long for us to bounce back. So, when you tell me, does, uh, do you foresee a shift, uh, at least in the medium term, or say the short term, not even the medium term, from high ticket investment price opportunities to slightly medium or smaller ticket items? So in sporting parlance, uh, rather than the big bang sponsorship opportunities that would cost upwards of 50 crores, clients or a larger number of clients choosing the smaller ticket items of say 10, 15 crores. Do you foresee that happening at least for the next few quarters? So, uh, so what I what I personally think uh, going forward and because we've been put into a spot like this, I think every brand is going to be thinking about how uh, his entire spend is going to be giving him exponential returns. Okay, so I think the entire measurement metric is going to be pushed uh, uh, upwards and, uh, and and challenged actually. So to me, it's about how are you going to be packaging multiple different uh, platforms, multiple different uh, entitlements, which will make a business yeah. case for uh, advertisers rather than a brand building case. So I mean, on one point, I agree with. Amit, that I don't think brand building is the right time uh, at this stage, but it's about how am I going to be solving a business problem. And the reason for my optimism, Naval, here is uh, there are going to be a lot of problems that a lot of brands and categories are going to be facing. Now, if sports can bridge that gap and solve that problem for them, I don't think anybody is going to be shying away from that, uh, whether it's through performance marketing, whether it's through on-ground investments, mm -hmm or whether it is through a combination of multiple layers around a marketing plan. I think as long as I'm able to solve a business problem for an advertiser, they will be more uh, uh, ready to listen to a, a plan like this. And, and another point in favor of India as a country is once things start looking up, and again, I'm, we are assuming things will look up uh, in post August, maybe in September, October, it's going to be a festive season. This time Diwali is going to be in second week of November. Okay, so the entire thing has to come alive. And, and I completely agree with uh, most of you guys that this is a temporary phase and I don't think uh, we are in this lockdown stage forever. And there has to be some kind of an optimism and positivity across borders, not only in from an agency standpoint or a brand standpoint, but at a right holder's place, I mean, someone like a Jatin who would possibly speak to multiple different arenas, there has to be some kind of upliftment for everybody, right? And that's that, that's what I believe. I mean, it's going to be more of an ROI-driven, business problem-solving driven approach rather than just about salience or a brand building driven approach. With the multiple pieces. Jatin, what are the, yeah. Yeah. Jatin, what are the action points? You said, you know, we need three, four stakeholders to come together and work together to, uh, uh, you know, work at the grassroots level. So what would be the four or five action points that you would put down for them? Uh, I don't know about four or five, but I can certainly cite a couple. I think if I if I put my if I put myself in the shoes of a custodian, uh, a sports federation, for example, <clears throat> I would use this time to uh, to ensure that uh, certification, uh, training programs, uh, all of that piece is covered with my supply side. You know, I will I will I will try and I will try and raise the standard of my supply side. Uh, at the same time, I will, uh, you know, I will look at technology to uh, to to manage, uh, you know, my entire operations more efficiently. Uh, so I think that's one piece uh, which is important. Uh, the second piece uh, which I feel which is going to come out of all this is the uh, is is a complete kind of uh, uh, alignment on the fact that technology is going to be a part of your coaching portfolio. You know, so so if if you were uh, conducting a a, a, a a cricket academy for five days a week, I think the physical part of it is going to be the offline part is maybe going to be two days a week, and the rest of the three days are going to be supplemented by some kind of digital interface and, yeah. and technology. Uh, there's also another piece to uh, to the back end. So if you look if if you if you look at the entire world. Uh, 
through a, through a venue owner's perspective. Say I own a, 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 an AstroTurf facility with eight pitches on it. Uh, I will try to use uh, a platform uh, like hellomore.com to come in and help me, uh, you know, uh, help more people discover that I'm, I'm present here, but also use marketing automation at the back end uh, to retain my earlier consumers and to keep them coming back to my platform. So, so I think mm -hmm. if you if you look at it from a demand and supply side, one the two truths which are going to come out of this is the leverage of technology platforms and the leverage of digital overall. Tell me, Jatin, uh, since uh, you know uh, you're talking, let me ask you another question, which is very different from this, since uh, especially since you've been a player yourself. I was reading a very interesting piece uh, on New York Times last month, which is which was talking about high-performance athletes uh, who are competing in Olympics. Sure. And a lot of them, especially gymnasts, they have a very short window. Yep. You know, unlike, say, cricket, where your careers can span uh, 10, maybe 15 years, in some cases, uh, longer. Yep. Individual sports allows you to have, you know, uh, not very long careers, especially, you know, gymnasts, for example, who would typically in their entire careers participate only in a single Olympics. Yeah. Uh, even, you know, you look at badminton players, their careers don't last at at least the peak level for 10 years. You know, five, six year window is the optimal for them when they are at a high. Now, when you lose almost, you know, six, seven months, which is, which you can say one entire season, it's almost losing 15, 10, 15% of your peak performance yeah. of your life. How does a player deal with that? You know, you've, you've been an India player yourself. What do you do? I, there's no playbook for this. You've not been in this position. But sure. it is an extremely tough situation to be in. So, sure. so I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, when you're an elite athlete, you, you ensure that you never lose anything given any circumstance. You know, so uh, if you're an elite athlete, you're 100% carrying some niggle or an injury or some strain with you. And, and this, this period can come as a boon for you. Essentially, you know, so where, for example, if you had to remain on the field, but now you don't need to remain on the field, you don't need to go under the knife, you know, just rest will, will kind of uh, uh, take care of that uh, entire rehab piece for you. The, the second is that uh, all the athletes, all elite athletes are going to come back fitter than ever before, you know, because they have the time and, and the space uh, to, to, work on, to work on their entire fitness. The downside is that well, there is a difference between fit to play and fit to perform. You know, so fit to play is fit to play, but these guys are high performance athletes. You know, so the window, the, the windows need to be built properly. You can't do with a two or three week window and say, okay, fine. You know, I'm uh, 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 Kings 11. Uh, you know, Satish cannot tell them that I'm going to get you a two week camp and you've got to jump into the IPL. No, it doesn't work that way. Uh, there, there, there is a, an a, entire kind of uh, duration which you need to work through. But, uh, but le yes, I, I, I understand your point that there will be some unfortunate incidents. So, if, if for example, if I was 37 years old uh, and Tokyo was my last chance, uh, you know, at, at an Olympic gold, that that potentially has gone uh, uh, 12 months uh, later down the road. Uh, but, but support systems uh, and 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 trainers and strength and conditioning coaches and your advisors and your mental health professionals, they all tackle this, this piece so there is no wastage anywhere. An athlete never looks at uh, anything wasted. They just, they just see it as more time to prepare, prepare for what they want to achieve. Right. Satish, I read something interesting and I want to pick you up on that. In 2006, when the last COVID uh, or the earlier avatar of COVID SARS to hit, we built and took out an insurance policy against such, you know, events happening in the future by virtue of which today, though this year there will be no Wimbledon, but the financial loss to them will be negligible yeah. or very, very little. Right? You must Did any of the, sorry? Yeah. I said they were just lucky because they've been paying a huge premium. If this had to continue and there was no COVID, they would have been down. Yeah. By That's the point of insurance anyway, right? I mean, yeah. you, you yeah. pay for, you know, yeah. one in a hundred or one in yeah. a million event and it happened. Yeah. Uh, has there been any conversation in IPL uh, team owner rooms about <coughs> having taken out an insurance policy on these lines? No, so force measure is something that we've been, we've been looking at. Uh, unfortunately, COVID was not, uh, uh, you know, COVID hadn't become larger than life at that point in time. Although we did try to uh, include that in our our uh, our uh, insurance uh, 
uh, you know the deal that we are doing but no to be honest uh, uh, there is no there is nothing as yet there is there is uh, some conversation that we are having with our insurance companies i have my doubts because uh, not now going forward also i doubt whether covid will ever become you know will be from i mean a pandemic of that size will drive insurance companies out of business that's right yeah and i keep saying this especially for teams like ours which you've uh, which you, for us people like us who travel travel is going to be a big issue because i don't know how many insurance companies will will include covid in that if i make a trip to uk and back so i don't don't have an answer to that vinith you have a view on this yeah it's a great learning novel um, uh, and it all actually surprised all of us and uh, the kind of social media traction uh, it the entire wimbledon uh, and its cancellation and the uh, and the insurance policy got itself is a testimony that it surprised everybody across the world and not only in india it's a great learning uh, and uh, it i mean we'll have to we'll have to see it's a conversation between uh, the insurance company and various different stakeholders and currently whatever i am in hearing is exactly what such said it's more about the force major and the implication of that uh, but again the question is did anybody you know think that a, a, a pandemic of this size and scale which actually put the world to a stand still would even think about i mean it's, it's and wimbledon a- sorry to interject but wimbledon is really an outlier i mean yeah sure started you know i mean it's just that covid happened and they happened to and they just turned lucky well they took out the policy a few years back so it didn't happen last year but 2006 yes. onwards my friend that's right yes that's a long way yeah yeah, yeah. it's a huge premium to pay <laughs> See, from a look from a Wimbledon's point of view, they will say they had the vision and 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 the and the and and, and had the approach to think about uh, extreme cases like these. I mean, that's going to be from their point of view, and and the rest of the world is going to be taken as learning. I mean, it's, it's always a two-way yeah. situation, isn't it? Okay, let me hop on to some audience question. Uh, there is a question for Mr. Menon from KS Nara Hari. Mr. Menon, if IPL happens in September or October without lo- live audience, will you redu- reduce the payments committed to players and the support staff? No, I doubt it. Okay, that's as direct as it can get. Another question from uh, Raghav Nagpal. Uh, my question is from a brand point of view. Do you think the price of acquiring some rights would be considerably cheaper than before? and would this present to you with the opportunity to invest more as cost of leveraging rights would be less due to activations going digital i think is that address to me amit amit if you actually see from a brand for any cost that will actually have a new cost there has to be a new ways to look for it and there won't be any baggage for what it used to pay before and that you have to start from whatever it needs to look for if the engagement levels in the interactions level and if the interest level are taken care definitely brands will look for it but to answer that definitely the price has to have a very very different role to play not it used to what it used to be before uh, vinith you have anything to add to that see look that that two ways to look at this question one is from a from a, a media rights point of view and one is from a investment that comes from an advertiser point of view in both the cases novel i think as i said earlier uh the rupee will have to work quite harder than before at least for the next couple of years 2020 and i would into 2021 also right so therefore there's going to be a lot of closed door conversations in terms of how do i add value to the entire piece and how can i help you build your business rather than how do i reduce cost structures so it's not about the cost we are all here to do business as long as i am building or putting a business case in front money has never been a problem so it's going to be more of a closed door conversations about how can i help you better your business in the next one and a half year rather than how do i reduce the price right let me also look at now uh, what are the opportunities that you know come out of covid for us for the sporting ecosystem obviously it provides us with an opportunity to uh, deeply integrate technology into you know uh, the the entire sporting space like jatin said you know coaching part of coaching can go online fan engagement can go online if there are no fans in the stadium it gives you an opportunity i was reading an article on indian express 3 uh, days back where a company which uh, developed some ar vr technology for the basketball league is also planning something similar for you know uh, 
Indian uh, sporting leagues where an Oculus kind of system, when worn on the head, can provide you a uh, much deeper experience of being in a stadium as opposed to just watching linear TV. What are the other things, for example, from a brand point of view, Vinith, if I were to ask you, what are the opportunities that brands can see in this in terms of engaging their audience, their fans better? See, look, Naval, there is no, no debate that you can't take away the, the joy of watching any sport live in the stadium. Okay, so that's, that's the first point. I mean, you just can't look at it from that point of view. I think, I think from a, I mean, I've also been reading about technology a lot and the impact and the leverage that you can have on that. See, my only point on technology is that, remember, technology has to be simple. Okay, it can't be complicated to the, from a production standpoint, it can't be complicated from an audience standpoint. So it has to be, it has to, it has to match with the expectation of the players, the coaches, and it has to deliver a much enhanced consumer expectation, right? So from that standpoint, it has to be reassuring to the fans about how yeah. the personal data of fans can be protected, how the identity, uh, uh, how, how can we identify the needs and expectation of fans and users before deploying any technology. So a lot of homework needs to be done before you actually deploy a technology. Okay, Otherwise, otherwise uh, you can just build certain things and it can just uh, go south. Uh, and we don't have some great India examples on, on building technologies. So, I mean, I again saying we have got three months before we get into any conversations. I think we should use this time uh, to, to test a lot of these things uh, offline. Uh, and I'm sure, I mean, as, uh, as most of the advertisers are, are going the digital way in this, I mean, technology will be one very, very important aspect of advertiser wanting to engage with their consumers to take, and it's already happening today. How is sport going to be leveraging that is the question one needs to ask. Uh, and, and it has to be a combination of multiple trial and error things uh, at this point in time. And I'm sure someone like Satish can build on this because I'm sure they must be thinking about lots that they can do uh, when and if IPL happens this year and, and without fans in Mohali. So, I mean, maybe Satish, you can take this from your preparedness, but I think there's going to be a lot of trial and error that needs to happen between between multiple people at this point in time. Uh, there's another question for uh, Satish, uh, which is with no ground activations, no gate revenues, no merchandise and no FNB revenue and no free passes. How would team owners look to diversify their revenue streams? Diversify? Yes. Where more? Where else can you bring revenue from? Of course, you're getting money from the central kitty. There is sponsorship money. Anything else that you guys are looking at doing? No, digital is the only space. And as as Vineet was saying, you know, we we are looking at various methods of uh, uh, slicing and dicing our fans at this present uh, moment. Uh, how much of it will will end up with? Uh, uh, you know, with garnering revenues or not, we are not so sure. We, we, we are in that experimentation mode, but a lot of time and energy is being spent on that. But to answer the gentleman's uh, um, question, uh, no, there are only about uh, the four or five sets of revenue streams. I mean, three of the most prominent ones, of course, we all know of. Um, but thankfully, in this country, uh, you know, sponsorships and, uh, and broadcast, uh, you know, uh, share that comes to us is substantial. So it's not as if you know that that you know that it'll completely kill us if uh, you know if uh, the ticketing doesn't happen in one year. We'd like to see the we'd like right. to, honestly we'd like to to get to engage the uh, the fans. We'd like uh, for this uh, for uh, for the TV audiences to watch. They've been de deprived of any form of live sports. We'd love for them to get back and watch some good games. There will be some compromises. We'll make that compromise this year. Correct. So. We are out of time. So before we log off, uh, one last final question uh, to all of you. We've had sport in India being run in a certain manner in the last, you know, 15, 20 years. If you were to rewind back, I mean, COVID is in a way, uh, a lot of ways, reboot, reset, so to say. If you were to rewind and look at all of these years, what were one or two things that you would, you know, want to do differently if you were doing it again? Vineet, why don't we start with you? So difference differently in terms of what novel? The way the sporting business has been run from a sponsorship point of view, from a you know economic management point of view, uh, how how would you do things differently now if you were to do it again? 
or what is the change you would like to see in the sporting economy let me put it differently okay so uh, i mean as uh, some i mean I, the previous i just take the previous question and answer this one so i would like to see couple of more revenue models that would be built into the entire ecosystem okay and we have got tremendous amount of learnings uh, from the global sporting ecosystem i mean if you look at the the european uh, sporting ecosystem or if you look at the north american sporting ecosystem there are not of avenues other than the three obvious ob avenues that we all speak about so i would think about how can i build multiple uh, revenue models on the back of digital and tech okay so that's some that's an experimentation i would love to see and love to be a part of from this uh, country's uh, economic standpoint i would definitely Definitely look at more ROI driven uh, and a very very ROI driven approach to the entire uh, sponsorship and the media rights ecosystem. Currently in India, when we spoke about ROI, we only looked at measured value. Okay, I would look at. I would love to see how we are pushing the envelope and look at it from a perceived value point of view, because then that right. helps advertisers build better ROI. so not also roi not only driven by media and television but how can i possibly go to the boardrooms and say that this sponsorship or this particular initiative of mine have actually helped me build lot of value which is intangibles okay so when i say perceived value i actually compare it with intangibles because what is tangible is the media value right so i would like to see more of these a uh, detailed uh, analytics that comes into play and defines a very sharper role for an advertiser to spend their money so these are the two things one is the the multiple revenue models on the back of digital and second is a very strong roi driven data driven uh, exercises that will possibly answer the unanswered questions of intangible so two things now fantastic amit from a advertiser point of view what are the what are the things you would like to see differently i think uh, first and the foremost is uh, the well uh, and most of the advertisers including me uh, i would say we were always swayed away by going in terms of the impact of the property one thing which is actually learned from this particular thing more than impact which has to be what would be the interaction level of the activity irrespective it may not be the number one activity or number of sports to be done in that particular country you know i think that will bring a lot of science in terms of what should be the affinity audiences that you really want to go for what should be the affinated reach that you want to go for rather than just going for an impact or the halo effect of any property to look for second thing what should be the affordability today because that will be a question asked again and again for next two or three years what would be the affordability metrics that you want to do and what would be objective that you are trying to drive from each and every object each and every money that you are actually trying to spend it may not be a long term commitment definitely going forward it will not be a long term commitment it will be tried and tested every property whether it is through technology whether it is through digital but idea is to what is the outcome that you're trying to drive which will make and which will make people a lot of cautious in going forward may not making a large commitment in terms of year or two year or three year deal but seeing every season and then moving ahead from there that that's from my side now right jatin let me come to you now i think uh, just looking at it solely from the supply side uh, education of of coaches uh, and and standardization of delivery uh, i think these are the these are the two uh, uh, two areas which should have been taken up it's it's not it's not late uh, it it can be done but i think uh, delivery standardization of delivery uh, and education of coaches uh, thereby increasing the funnel on the supply side these are the two things i would like who can be the flag bearer for that the custodians of the sport the bcci is the all india football federations uh, in 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 partnership with with the league uh, 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 team owners and what, what is the role the government can play in this any constructive role the government can play in this absolutely i mean uh, it, uh, india is the youngest country in the world uh, a lot a lot of uh, uh, kids are playing sport across the ecosystem only 0.001% of them play for india the rest can be involved in sport and coaching and operations and the other piece so so right. so i think this is the time for for sport to take a leap uh, and and try and be recognized and get an industry uh, status i think a lot of uh, funneling will happen just with that one uh, uh, move from the government right satish you get uh, get the last word so in <laughs> so in some ways uh, i would second what uh, vinit said but uh, i would probably try and try and um, fine tune that a little more to suit my needs um i would say that you know um, unlike any other country abroad when for uh, overseas we look at sporting property 
these sponsorship is uh, plays a very important role. Uh, when I say sponsorship, I'm talking about team sponsorship, nomenclature, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think uh, there has to be a, 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 a model where where you can weigh the uh, not in an intangible fashion, but in a tangible way, be able to weigh the uh, the uh, the pros of uh, of a sponsorship and how the uh, the the association rubs off on the brand uh, in a manner in which it uh, it uh, benefits the brand. Uh, there are some loose uh, methods of doing it, which some of us use in the marketplace, but. I wish there was a body which could which could uh, mathematically work on this, and uh, you know help brands uh, grow with the naming rights and nomenclature of these. Going forward, uh, my only uh, the only thing I would like to see happen uh, in the future is that we can we are allowed to build uh, more on digital, and therefore we have more access to content. If I may use the term for want of anything better, because content is going to be a, a huge part, and and as Amit said earlier, engagement is key. Um, more than anything else, reach is one part of it, but engagement is becoming equally important. And uh, we carry these assets with us, and those are the guys who make you stick to the game. It's uh, the sport, and uh, for us to have access and engagement to these uh, assets that we carry, uh, you know, if we are allowed more, uh, I'm not talking about live streaming or I'm not talking about live game, but uh, beyond that, if we, can, if we are given an opportunity to be able to use this to the benefit of our sponsors, it will help us a lot. fantastic well thank you for a fantastic conversation to all of you i think for me the key takeaway is threefold one sport is alive and kicking we are all desperately wanting for it to be back soon and it will be back soon uh, fans in stadiums or fans at home uh, the passion the engagement that sport uh, generates uh, is not going away anywhere yes there is an economic downturn uh, likely to happen over the next few uh, quarters having said that sport is one of the unifying uh, ecosystems in a position to attract brand money uh, to attract investments of from brands uh, than any other uh, uh, ecosystem most importantly sports in the larger economy and the psyche of the nation plays a very very important role i think the role that we a lot of us uh, underestimate in fact there is a cii government report uh, uh, which was released at uh, Uh, the CIA sporting event last year in October, which said India has an opportunity to create a ten billion dollar sporting economy, starting from the grassroots level, going all the way up to the topmost level, with a employment generation, direct employment generation opportunity for ten million people. So I think the government also sees this as a very serious ecosystem, which can, which is not just khel kud, you know, so to say, which can be tackled with later, but which should be dealt. on priority immediately as part of their plan to get the economy kick started with that positive note let me thank all of you satish thank you thank you vinit jatin amit for taking your time out and i hope the khel kood starts very soon and we are back at least onto our tv screens glued on till the next time thank you everybody for joining us goodbye from all of us hey, thank, thank you all of you guys thanks yeah. that was really yeah. thank you very much thanks thanks bye, bye.